Welcome back to the Creative Financing Podcast. Before we get into this episode, I wanted to ask you guys to scroll down a little bit and hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out a lot, encourages us to keep making more content here on the YouTube channel. Thanks so much and enjoy the show. Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Creative Financing Podcast. My name is Nicole Kamanjian. I'm here with Cody Richard and Jeff Rappaport. Uh, last week, we went over one of um, Cody's case studies and how he put an option together. And this week, Jeff is going to um, go over what he would do in this situation. Yeah, so little the student, now the master will show us if anything can be done, he'll show us how to do it. Yeah, I'm not so sure, but uh, <laughs> I'm going to show you at least a couple of ways that I would look at it and see if we can make something work. So wh why don't you review your example real quick, Cody? Yeah. Yeah. So last time, a big issue that we had, this was a duplex. Each unit was three bedroom, two bathroom. It's in Salt Lake City. Um, property needs quite a bit of repairs. Roof needs to be redone. Interiors are dated. Properties just stated in general, really. And like we talked about last time, I had a contract for deed offer. Um, but some of the issues we came across is the owner's asking way too much up at 765 is his asking price. Current rents are current rents are 3400 Pro forma, we'd be lucky to get 4000 a month. Um, owner's not paying utilities, which is great, but taxes are about 250 a month. Insurance is about 200, and then repairs and maintenance are around 300 a month. Good. Okay. And then we worked through some numbers where we put together uh, what the income was, which is 3,400 mm -hmm. times 12 minus some vacancy. Uh, we came out to be 38,760. Yep. And we worked through some expenses. There weren't a whole lot, taxes, insurance, repairs, and some maintenance, 10,500. Um, basically that left us with 28,260 to work with here, correct? That is correct. Okay. All right, so first of all, let, let me ask both of you, uh, as this deal stands, would you buy this? No, no. My thought was hopefully get somebody that's in love with the appreciation potential, but I would not buy this. What about you, Nicole? Uh, definitely not. Not. I, I mean, yeah, I wouldn't. I'm just curious to know if it's on the east or west side, but it's still a lot for a duplex. So you have a duplex and mm -hmm. I, I asked you this on a previous episode and I remember what you said. I said, what is your property worth? Right. And you mm -hmm. said, I think you said 671. Is that right? Right. Yep. Is it a three bed, two bath each side? Uh, no, it's two bed, one bath each side. So what, and what does it bring in in rent if it were rented long term? um let's see hold on well one side rents for uh 625 um mean? and i'm doing i'm doing six airbnb on the other one 1625 6 so 25 yeah so it would be 3250 3250 dollars um monthly if both pretty, sides or which is pretty close to what this property brings in right mm -hmm. uh, super close 34, 33, and yours is worth 671. Um, mm -hmm. But you, you could, you know, you're, you're doing vacation rental, right? Or uh, nightly rental, um, which allows you to get more, probably a bigger headache, but um, allows you to get yes. more, right? Um, but a long-term rental, they're, they're fairly similar, except that this property needs a bunch of work still, and he's asking like a hundred grand more, right? Mm -hmm. Pretty mm -hmm. much. So, um, so we, we've got to figure out what, if anything, we would do. Now, I, I would tell you right off the bat, I would, I would pass. Um, 
And the reason that I would pass is not because I, I, I don't love the numbers, right? The, the numbers speak volumes to me. And uh, whatever is going to happen, there's not, it, it is not going to be a super great deal for the seller. And it's not going to be a super great deal for me or my buyer. Uh, there's just not enough money in it to justify the price. But if we wanted to make something work, and the reason that I don't want to is that, uh, and I mentioned this on last episode, is that there are too many issues, too many um, overpriced. If it was just overpriced, I might deal with it, um, but it needs work, um, which means that it's overpriced and you got to put more money into it. Uh, and, uh, and the rents, I, I'm, I'm I don't even know, maybe you could get that $2,000 a month if you go and put, you know, 15 grand in each unit or something. Um, but, and the roof, right? So you're probably looking at 50,000. Um, I think you estimated 60. Yep. Is that right? Okay. All right. So what would I do here? So there, there would be two things, maybe three things that I would look at. So the one is that he has a small mortgage on this, really, really small, but he's paying like 800 bucks a month for it, right? If we eliminated that mortgage, now whatever the payment is that we're paying him um, is net as opposed to, you know, if we're only paying him $1,500 a month, he's only getting seven, right? Um, so whatever offer we're going to make, we want it to take out that mortgage, okay? So the first one that I would look at would be, um, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come and I'm going to discount them because I, 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 I would have an argument in my opinion to show him that he's asking way too much. Now he can say, go to hell. Or I don't care what you think. And yeah, and that's fine. I took my shot and it didn't work. Uh, but more often than not, um, sometimes people need some, uh, they, they need reality to- Reality check? Yeah, exactly. Reality check. And you know what happens is that, you know, a month, two, three, four down the road when they still haven't sold the property um, and you continue to follow up that they say, all right, let's talk. Um, so so I, I, I'm not going to pay him what he's asking um, because it just doesn't make any sense for me. Um, so I'm going to come in at, well, let's look at, let's look at two offers here. Okay. So one would be, um, let's say purchase price of 675. Now I know it's, it's a hundred grand less than what he wants, but, uh, that's what I can afford to pay. And you know what? Every deal, every offer that I look at going into, I want to try to get the seller what they're asking, mm -hmm. but sometimes I can't. And yep, that's the way it is. Uh, as a wholesaler, uh, I rarely make a cash offer that the seller really wants, right? So we've got to negotiate. Um, this would be no different. Uh, I try to use creative financing to solve problems. This, his problem really is that he's just way off, way off. Okay. So um, I, my guess is if he had it appraised, that it would appraise more for this than where he is. I, I'd be closer than he is. So I'm going to offer a smaller down payment, okay? And so when I say smaller, 50 grand, okay? okay? And the reason that I'm going to offer a smaller down payment is I'm, I already feel like I'm overpaying. So uh, why, why am I going to continue to keep giving the seller what he wants and I don't get what I want? So uh, I, I'm giving you the price. Now he may see that differently, right? That's a hundred grand less than what I was asking. Yep, but uh, how much money do we got to go put into it? Do you really think that your duplex is worth, you know, 800 and something thousand dollars? Um, no, sorry. 
Okay, and now I'm gonna do what we discussed a few episodes ago. I'm gonna offer him principal only payments, no interest, okay? And uh, I already know that we have room for not much, right? So I would say I'm going to offer you payments of $1,800 a month. 1800 principal only. Yep, P, principal and interest. Just principal, sorry. Yep, $1,800 a month. And um, for at least five years, 60 months. Okay. And that would mean that the principal pay down 1800 times 60 is 108,000. Okay, so be 525 minus 108,000. So 417, is that right? 417 or 517? 517. Okay. Okay. Um, and now at least, let's see, at 517, let's say 4%, 30 years, our payments is still 2468. I, I still don't love it. Um, but it's at least, uh, at least now I know I've got equity, right? I, I know that it's, that the property is worth more than that. Um, not quite sure how much more, but um at least I feel better than where we ended up last time where our payment was going to be, you know, over $3,000. So, um, and the only reason that I'm doing this is that now I can get someone into this for, let's say 10 ish percent down, which they normally would not be able to do. And, uh, one, the cash flow is not much, right? There's there's not much. So maybe four or five grand, and you, you probably have to go put a little money into the property, which will make it still affordable. So maybe you go and put, um, maybe you don't go put fifty grand into it. Maybe you put twenty five, thirty, and uh, so and we and you're charging, let's say, a twenty thousand dollar assignment fee. So you're into it for a hundred, still less than 20%. Now let's hope that you got your rents up to $4,000, right? Um, so now at least you're making a little bit of cash flow, right? So the cash on cash return, if your NOI is 28,000 and... Well, so there's about $6,400 in cash flow at that value, right? Right there, because NOI was like 28, 18,000 is going to be 21,6. Um, so there's about uh, no, $6,400. And if we add another what were we thinking six hundred dollars to the rents per month is that right cody it was 34 we think we can get maybe four four thousand yeah so another 7200 now our cash flow is more like 16 right Net. gotcha so just to make sure i'm on the same page we looked at our noi twenty eight thousand yep. minus our monthly payment that we'd be making Yes. 18,000 18, or approximately 18,000? No, it's 21,6 is the monthly oh, is the total payment. So the 28,000 minus the 21,6 for the debt service. So that leaves us 6,400. Okay. Okay. But now we've, you know, we, we put in some additional money. So we've added 30 grand. Mm -hmm. And now let's say we got the rents up. So we're making an extra $600 a month times 12. 
in the cash flow then. So our new NOI is about 35,000. Yeah, it's about, it's probably, yeah, 72. Yeah, it's about that. Okay. So Minus that. the 21.6 would be our cash flow, right? So now we're at about 14,000-ish, right? 13-something. Okay. Okay. So a little better. And we're into it for, you know, let's say 100. So our cash on cash return is what? For the pro forma? Yep. So about 14,000. It might not quite be there in a year, but, you know, hopefully within, you know, 15 months. Um, so 14%. So the 14,000 divided by 100,000. Not bad, right? Yeah, so, I feel like that'd be great here in Utah. Yeah, not bad. So, but this also means that we had to come in a hundred grand less, mm -hmm. um, and we had to pay principal only. What could we offer a little more? We could. We need a longer term. Um, you know, hey, you want seven hundred? We we could probably get there, but uh, we probably need an extra two more years. Um, uh, so. I don't know that I'd want to go anywhere near his asking price. I just think it's too high. Um, now you'd have to really, you'd have to stay in this property too long. You'd have to commit yourself too long to it. Um, so I don't love that. I, I love principal only, but if I'm committing myself for 10 years, then I, I better have the right to sell this with, terms to someone else in case i want out of it right so jeff is this um contract for deed is this what, you could do it as contract it? for deed you could do it as um uh, a trustee to note because i want him to pay off his debt out of that 50 grand right so can you can you explain the difference between the two sorry but with I, what contract like for contract deed and trustee for deed to note? Trustee to note. Yeah. Yeah. The difference is really simple. Contract for deed means that the title will stay with the seller. So it will stay in the seller's name. And in Utah and in various markets across the country, and it's referred to as a land contract agreement for sale contract for uh, uh something agreement i don't know there's a number of names for this uh but they all work the same and it really is is works exactly like buying a car you go to the car dealership you get a car you own it but you went through the financing of the car dealership they give you the keys you are the owner um same as contract for deed however the bank holds the title to your car until you pay them in full here, the seller has title to your property until you pay off, pay it off in full. Um, trustee to note is exactly the way that you would go and buy a property using a bank, right? Um, uh, title does transfer to you. Um, and trustee to note is used when there's no debt on the property. And it's exactly like if I went to go get a loan from Wells Fargo or Bank of America, they would give me a trustee to note or a mortgage, depending on what state you're in. Again, kind of works very similarly. And uh, you know, that's how it would work. So it's really the difference between who's going to remain on title. And, uh, and I would tell you, if I was wholesaling it, I'd probably do like Cody did in one of our previous examples and uh, probably make it contract for deed and try to give another benefit to the seller. And if I was buying it for myself, I don't, I, I'd rather have it trusted and note. Okay. Okay. So I am not saying that this by any means would get accepted, um, but this is what I would be based on. I, I would be willing to do. Um, uh, my guess is, you contacted this guy out of the blue, right? Um, right. Uh, it is not unusual for people to say, yeah, I'd sell, but you know, I want my absolute pie in the sky um, offer. And uh, so then you come back to him and you say, uh, 
can't do that. Could do this. Uh, and if he's not on board, then follow up. Um, talk to you in a month or two. See what yeah. happens. Let's talk one more quick offer. I, I don't even think this one would work personally, but um, I just don't think we have enough room in it. But, uh, you know, again, when there's a small amount of money owed on the underlying loan, um, I might look at doing some subordination. That way I know that the debt gets paid off. Um, he does not. I, I mean, I can't, I don't have to require him to pay off the debt with that option, but it's, it's more in his favor. I, I think you'd rather pay 20 of the 50 grand you're getting to get 17, 1800 in cash flow instead of a thousand, right? Or whatever it was. So what I would do on this one is I think I would offer him like, let's say 65,000 as a down payment that I can borrow in first position on the property, right? So I will pay off his loan. So 20 mm -hmm. of that will go toward his loan, 45 in his pocket. Uh, I'm looking at, first of all, how hard will it be for me to borrow this? And this is not, I'm not going to a bank. Um, you know, I am going to an individual that uh, is not in the profession of lending money, right? So I'm not looking for a hard money lender. I'm looking for someone that may not even know they're in the lending business. Um, uh, and that might be me talking to friends and family about, hey, I'm about to buy a great deal. And uh, I'm wondering if you want to be a part of it. Um, and, you know, with uh, is guaranteed possibilities that you will ever get right because okay. this property is worth at least 600 right I, I mean can we all agree on that yeah we'll agree <laughs> um so you're at like 10 percent loan to value and uh with the seller getting a pretty big second on this uh the chances of you not getting your money back somewhere somewhere down the road is like impossible so uh very very secure so maybe you could borrow this at a lower rate um maybe as low as five um but let's just say let's say seven percent okay so if we took sixty five thousand and we times it by 0.07 it's 4550 divided by 12. so we've got a $379 a month payment. Okay. So uh, in our last example, we pushed uh, to get an $1,800 a month payment for the seller, right? I mean, if we took any more out to give to the seller, there's really nothing left for the buyer. Yeah. I'm going to think about that when I'm putting together any other offers, right? That I really can't exceed $1,800, which makes this super difficult to put together because that's very little money based on the price of this property, right? So, um, but if I had to, I'd explain it to the seller. Um, yeah, I'd love to pay you more, but your property just won't allow it to happen. So, now, what do we do on the note to the seller? Well, since we did principal only on the first one, uh, it's pretty, uh, you know, we've got to get this paid down. Um, mm -hmm. This isn't going to pay down as fast as the other one. So uh, I would say, let's say we're willing to do, we're at 675 on the other one. Let's say that we're willing to do 690 on this one okay. okay so purchase price up a little bit yep and the reason for it is i am trying to get his attention mm -hmm. and allow us to borrow on the property in the first position right if all things are considered and i make equal offers he's not taking this one so uh but what i need to do now is all right um uh, the note to the seller is for six hundred and twenty-five thousand. Is that right? 
That's correct. So note in second position, 625. And that's just uh, the purchase price of 690 minus the 65,000 down payment. That is right. Now we're going to pay him the 1400 principal only. And remember 1400 add those two together. It's basically $1,800. Um, that's where we need to be, but we got to extend our balloon. How far are we looking? That is a great question. <laughs> um, I would say we want to go eight years, so 96 months. Okay. And that will be 1,400 times 96 should be 134,400. And we're going to deduct that from our 625, right? So 49600, excellent. Okay. So at the end of our balloon, we will still owe 49600 to the seller and we're going to owe 65000 to our private lender. Um, so we're still into this for like 555. Where were we on the other one? Would our private the money to the private lender would that pay down as well? Nope. Or we're just that's an interest only payment. That is interest only. I see. Okay. You can structure it any way that you like. Mm -hmm. Um, but if I told if I if I came to you and I said, Hey, would you be interested in getting like the safest return that you could possibly get and get, you know, three, four, five, ten times the amount that you're getting right now in a CD or a savings account or, um, and you'd probably be like, wait, what? Um, yeah. So the, the reason I like this is that, hey, you're able to pay this person every single month, right? The interest, their principal stays intact and is just paid off at the end. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah, that helps oh, get the payment down. Yeah. And yeah, uh, will, will this property go the whole eight years? Who knows? Um, but let, let's see what uh, what happens if, well, one, seller is getting 690000 right? Mm -hmm. So we're still a little bit high on our balloon compared to the first option. We're probably $40,000 more. But how much money did we put out of pocket? Nothing, right? Zero, right? Yeah. Because we're able to borrow that money. So we, we don't have any money in this. And so now, uh, does it make sense? I mean, if the cash flow is lower right now, that's all right. We don't have any money in it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, our money can go toward you know the maintenance, the repairs, get the rents up. Now we can start, you know, we're, we're going to get a really good uh, return on our investment. Our cash on cash return should be good, um, which is, you know, not an easy thing to do on a really overpriced property. And th that is exactly what we would have gotten done. No, that makes a lot of sense. So, Nicole, does that, did, did that make sense to you or did we lose you? No, that made sense. So this this deal that you put together here, or this option, I should say, would still be a like better to wholesale than, right? Like, I mean, I guess what why I'm asking is because you're zero money in anyway. So well, I guess unless you're taking the repairs. So normally, when I do subordination, uh, I normally want to stay in it. And the reason that I say that is, I, I one, if I'm wholesaling it, now I got to explain it to another investor, right? Which is, mm -hmm. hey, by the way, I, I'm charging you a 20,000, you need to come to the table with 20 grand for my assignment fee. 
And then you need to borrow 65000 in first position on the property. And then you'll get a note for you know, uh, the 625 and you, you know, you'll make payments on both. You should be able to borrow that at you know six or seven. What, what borrow what from where from who? Uh, so it gets a little complicated. Could you? Yes, you could. Um, but not a lot of people get it. And so I, me personally, I try to save subordination for the properties that I would own, um, uh, that I either want to own or I want to position myself in the middle, like a sandwich um, owner finance deal, or you know, how I'll, I'll buy it and then I'll lease option it out, something like that. Because you see, it's costing me nothing to get into this deal. Um, I, I'd like that, but that works for me. Um, uh, and if I was to sell it on terms to someone else now, I don't know where I could go with this on terms because, you know, uh, on terms you want to raise the price. I don't know if I can raise the price anymore. And, uh, but could you imagine if you have principal only payments, first you got in with no money down. So whatever down payment you get from your buyer, you keep all of. And if you have principal only payments on a portion and a large portion of it, your loan is getting paid down. I am not giving principal only payments to my new buyer. They're paying an interest rate. Uh, their loan's going to pay down much slower. Uh, so I'm going to create a cash flow. And then at the end, I'm going to have a big payday, more than likely. So uh, I am not saying that either of these offers will get accepted. Um, they're not ideal. Uh, but I think what we've determined is not all leads are ideal. Not all leads fit with what we're trying to do. Uh, we're only going to overpay so much. And, uh, and then we got to decide, hey, which ones do we want to pursue? You know, I've, I've, we, we've talked about a couple of commercial deals that, um, that we are putting under contract right now. And one is, an apartment building that is principal only payments for five years and uh that that is a good deal um it, it, it's sort of over, overpriced it, it it was it's not um if it's not overpriced it's a really low cap rate but it's almost a brand new property you know it's four years old and uh so what do we do we just add to the price right but now we just pay principal only payments. And when you're paying uh, $19,500 a month, things get paid down fairly quickly. And uh, now when it's all said and done, five years is not a long period of time. And if you wait it out five years, all of a sudden you're only gonna owe like 5.4 million. And uh, which is much more in line with where it should be. So, principal only payments can come in really handy and especially when you're dealing with some of these overpriced properties but again i probably wouldn't pursue this one cody that, that's just my personal too many issues to overcome yeah no i think that's fair it's helpful to see at least the perspective though even if it's not something i end up trying to pursue further yeah, uh, well, th this this one would take some negotiations on your part because I don't know how set he is. You know, that to me, when sometimes when you reach out to someone cold, uh, you know, cold calling, cold texting, that yeah, yeah my, my mom used to tell me all the time. Yeah, all these people, all these investors call and say, "I want to buy your house," and my mom's like, "So I tell them, sure." And they say, okay, what do you want? And she's like, a million. And, uh, you know, in her mind, her house was worth maybe 600000 at the time. She's like, a million. You know, I'll move for a million. And some would say, well, I think we can make that happen. You know, no one ever did. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, she's like, I don't really want to move. But you, know, you pay me a million, I'll move. And mm -hmm. so you get that. And uh, what your job is now is to, hey, maybe it's to present something less and see what kind of pushback there is. Maybe there's none. Maybe he's like, 
that's actually a fair offer or no, nah, not a chance. I would never do that. Um, okay. Well, let me, you know, before I let you go, let me just show you what you're up against, right? That, um, you know, based on the price, you're telling me it needs work uh, based on the rents. Look, you know, that you gave me all the expenses. There's this much money left. Um, you know, uh, what investor do you really think is going to come with that kind of money and um, not make any money on it? So, uh, and that's, it, it, to me, it's like that, that's the conversation you have with some of those owners. And some say, huh, I get it. And some say, I don't care. And that, that's fine too. You can't yeah. work with everyone. Yeah, for sure. That's super helpful. Nicole, any last questions? No, this was, this was helpful seeing how you kind of, uh, I wouldn't say like made it work 100%, but made it, I don't know, a little better than what it was. Well, but yeah, the, the one thing that I, I think both of you hopefully will get is that, do you remember what, what I said initially? I asked both of you when we first looked at this deal um, and I said, what stands out? The 1% rule. Yeah, the, just how far apart we were, right? That, mm. um, uh, you know, that first example that Cody brought, I agree. You know, I would look at that and I know that market and I would say, there's a shot here, right? Then we, we need to dive deeper. I see <laughs> this and I'd be like, you gotta be kidding. Um, uh, you know, and then it needed work on top of that. I'd be like, yeah, you're crazy. Um, and that, that, that's me, right? That, everyone has to decide how they want to run their own business, but I'd be like, yeah, move on dead. Um, or follow up when he gets real. So, um, <laughs> something. I think that's what you told me on that duplex that I found in Florida. You're like, yeah, just watch out. Yeah, yeah. But I, 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 the one thing I don't want to have to do is I, I don't want to um, try to convince someone to work with me, right? Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm not trying to beg someone, please take less. Um, I, I'm not going to chase after them. Um, so when we go after these more, you know, these lower cap rate type investments where, you know, because of the market, they're super high price and they, they don't bring in the kind of income that you'd want to see. Uh, th there's one question. I, if I could teach everyone, hey, when you're dealing with these kind of leads, there's one question. Everything else really doesn't matter. Are you open to terms? And if the answer is no, goodbye, got to go. Because we're, we're, we're out. Um, uh, unless you're planning on getting a discount of hundreds of thousands of dollars, we're out. Um, uh, and I don't even know if we're in with terms, but I know that we are out if terms are out, right? So, uh, and I see stuff I, I went through. Uh, Cody probably could attest to this, that he probably saw some things in the morning I went through some leads last night. I'm like, out, out, out. Uh, and uh, they're asking too much. <laughs> this is plain and simple. I'm not, I'm not, they're not open to terms. I'm out. Um, so creative financing can really make a difference. It doesn't always, but it can. And uh, in some cases, that's all we need to know. Okay. Awesome. So let's wrap this up. Um, thank you all for listening. Uh, please rate and review us. Uh, it helps us get a, a bigger reach uh, nationwide, outside of our country, whatever it may be. Uh, and certainly let us know how the new format's working out, the both the YouTube and the, the podcast. Um, go join the Creative Financing Podcast Facebook group. Uh, easy to do, free. Uh, put your questions in, uh, bring your deals. We'll look at them, uh, help you. Um, if you're interested in any furthering education, we have an apprentice program. Uh, it's what we do in our business. We teach you how to do it nationwide, uh, how to look at deals, both Cody and uh, Nicole are in our program. 
And uh, if you're interested in the Creative Financing Academy, uh, it's all things creative. That's all we do. We focus on understanding how to write offers and deal structuring and exit strategies and whether it's adding to your existing business or uh, creating a whole new business, uh, we can help you with that. If you're interested in either of those programs, contact me, Jeff, at weofferoptions.com or Rebecca at weofferoptions.com. Uh, happy to chat with you. Um, any last words, either of you? No, that was great. You guys are awesome. Thank you. And go out and create some terms. We'll see you next time.